we are continuing the quest of building the high-speed Core XY 3D printer called the Wii Baby. I am Roy and I have a master's degree in engineering design and I design 3D printers as a hobby. This part is going to be more complex than the previous part. I hope you will enjoy building this machine. If you're just interested in 3D printers in general, building them, upgrading them, or maybe acquire one, then you can learn a lot from this process. So let's add some more parts to the base frame. We are adding the Y axis, we are adding the C axis, the bed frame, that will actually complete the frame as a 3D printer. We are going to do the X carrier later though. So let's get going. Let's start with the wheels. Insert a bearing at one side, insert a shim in the middle, insert the other bearing at the other side and squeeze them together. Not too hard. And then do that for all the wheels. Then take the Y carrier, make sure that the fork fits and it runs up and down without uh, restrictions. You need to drill up the holes, so use a 5mm bore for the M5s and a 4mm bore for the M4s. Add the wheels using an M5 by 30 a washer, and remember the shims on both sides of the wheel. You should be able to turn the nut by hand. Make sure the wheels run smooth. Repeat the process for the C carriers. Remember to insert M4 nut in the forks. Be careful to not drill the 4mm hole with a 5mm bore. Moving on to the X idler brackets, insert a nut at the top, add an M5 by 35 and a washer. Place the shim and an idler. You are going to use one smooth idler and one toothed idler. Make sure you have the shim also in between the idlers and one in the bottom as well. Do the other towers as well, but place the idlers opposite of what you just did. Moving on to the bed frame, we have two 350s and one 290s. We have two idler lifting brackets and all the T-nuts and M5x10s. So place all the T-nuts necessary inside the Wii slots. Add the idler lifting brackets temporary at this point. We are going to add some idlers to them later. We just need them as a reference to place the L brackets. Again, make sure you drill all the holes in the printed parts. Center the two 350s on the 290 bar with the idler brackets in place and then add the L brackets and secure them. Then you can remove the idler brackets and insert the smooth idlers with the shims of course on both sides. You are going to secure the idler with a lock nut as per usual. Just give the nut a little bit of tension so you can swivel the bracket around and the idlers run smooth. Place the idler brackets back in place. I was not happy with my rear blue idler bracket so I changed that to a black one as you see here. Adding the idlers and the shims and uh, giving them just enough tension as per usual. You have to drill up the holes again. I designed the holes a little bit tight per intention as drilling them will be more precise than printing them the correct size. This black bracket should just be placed uh, temporary as we are going to adjust this one later. Check that the third C carrier fits. Moving on to the bed support buddies. So drill up the holes again. Also for the thumb screws. Then insert a lock nut in the thumb screw. So just squeeze that in with a plier so it's firmly stuck. You also need a nut inside the bed support brackets. So squeeze that in as well. Now you need an M5 by 20 to screw inside the nut we just placed inside the bed support brackets. And then add the thumb screw and we are done with the bed support. Moving on to adding the forks for the C carriers. Start by drilling up the spacers. The screw for the wheel is a M5 by 35, no washer. Then add the spacer, add the shim, add the wheel. Another shim. Then another spacer. Then a washer and a lock nut. Secure the lock nut firmly. You can uh, over tension a little bit and then loosen it again. So you can uh, barely 
you turn it around with your fingers and then the tension should be fine. Just check that the wheel runs smooth with no interference. So repeat this process. Remember to drill the holes uh, with the correct size bore. So we need a five millimeter bore for the M5s and a four millimeter bore for the M4s, of course. So repeat this process for all the C carrier forks, three in total. Already moving on to the X axis, we're gonna add the Y carriers. On the end of the x-axis, make sure you insert all the necessary T-nuts. Use the cod model as reference. We are going to use M5x12s on the side of the carrier and M5x20 on the top. So I'm just inserting those temporary. Add the rest of the T-nuts and the other Y carrier. Place the screws in place. And then we are going to adjust the, the width of uh, the carriers so everything runs smooth in the Y V slots. So I'm drilling up also here the holes in the forks so we can add the wheels. Flip the frame on its back so we can easily access the forks to insert the wheels. So another M5 by 35, no washer, the spacer, the shim, the wheel, another shim and another spacer and a washer and a lock nut and tension just uh, firmly. Repeat this for both forks. We are now going to adjust the wheel tension and uh, also the um, spacing between the Y carriers. So the Y carriers are not attached to the X axis at this point. We are going to do that later when we place the idler towers. So just make sure that everything runs smooth back and forth. Make sure you place the right tower on the right side. So this is the A side of the printer and we have a smooth idler up top. On the B side, we have a smooth idler on the bottom. This is very important or you will not be able to add the belts correctly. Secure the towers with the M5 by 12s and also the M5 by 20. This also secures the Y carriers as well. Make sure the X axis runs smoothly and also check that it's perpendicular to the Y extrusions. The spacing on both corners should be about the same. If there's a little bit of difference, that's okay. We are going to adjust that when we apply the belts. So just make sure it runs smooth. We're now going to add the bed frame. Flip the frame over on its idler side and then add the bed frame to the already placed forks. Add just a little bit of tension. This is not gonna be much at all. Make sure that uh, the C axis runs smooth up and down. Then place the third C carrier, drilling up the holes. Place it and make sure you have the fork inside. We are not going to secure it. At this point, we're just gonna kick it in place. Add just a little bit of tension to your nut or your screw. In the cut model, I use a bolt inside the fork and not a nut, and uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, actually, it's, I think it's even better. Make sure that the uh, bed frame runs smooth on the C axis, and then we are going to fix the C carriers with M5 by 10s on both sides, uh, on the top and also on the underside. I'm just flipping the frame over to access the underside of the carrier. Check that the bed crossbar also is sort of perpendicular, that it has the same um, distance in all the corners on both sides. Then secure the rest of the C carriers. The tension on the forks should be just about enough so the, the bed frame can slide down by its own weight. 
if it's too tight it will stay up so then you can lose them a little bit as you see in the video so I play a little bit with the tension here to make sure that it's not too tight thanks for watching guys if you are still with me that's awesome and I hope you do subscribe if you don't already do and uh, I'll see you soon